Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Learn Smart Coding. In this video, we are going to see how to build, push a Docker image to the Docker Hub, which is free, using GitHub Action. And the project that we are going to use is a .NET Core Web API using .NET Core 7. Come, let's get started. So before we do actions, let's take a look at what kind of uh, things that we have to do, the step-by-step -step process in order to do what we are going to cover in this video, right? So using GitHub action, we are going to build push image to the Docker Hub for the .NET Core Web API project using .NET Core 7. So these are the five steps that we will be covering in this video, right? So first we have to have an account in Docker Hub and then we should be able to create a repository and then build an image automatically from the GitHub action, push it, and then we will verify the testing using, you know, the incremental change in the main branch. This is what we are going to do. Now our project is uh, using Docker. So if you go to github.com slash Docker, they have a very good documentation for the build push action that uh, we just need to use it. You can see the base baseline of the code, the action, the YAML file code is here. This is what we are going to use as a base for us to build the GitHub Action uh, pipeline. Now, this is the GitHub repository where the application is sitting, which is in .NET Core 7, right? So now there are two things, actions and settings. If you go to actions, based on the project, it will figure out what kind of, uh, you know, what kind of things you, you really needed for the CI pipeline. So it is giving us some suggestions, could be a Docker image, it could be a dot and desktop application or you can even push to the container because this project has a docker file so that's why it is suggesting these things you can use this suggestion or if you know what to use you can you can come down and scroll and see if something is there or you want to scratch you want to start from scratch click on set up a workflow yourself and this will bring up a plain empty page where you need to build everything from first right so we will start with a uh, minimal base so I'm going to choose the docker image come back and choose the docker image now it gave us some pieces of code right it basically tells the name the name is what will come there and then you know first let's put a docker image dot yaml file so I'm going to rename it as ci docker image this will always always goes to dot github slash workflows folder okay so this is the base image right so this is the base uh, yaml file what we are going to do is before we start this yaml file we have few things that we have to do right so let's go to settings under the uh, security secrets and variables you have something called action so here we need to set up few variables because eventually in yaml file we'll be using it the first one that we have to use is uh, uh, the username and uh, the token right so the first one we will name it as docker hub underscore username so this one is my username of my docker hub my username is learn smart coding in the hub.docker.com i will show you right and then so we have that username stored in the secret that's okay the next one that we will use is the docker hub underscore token so this is a special token that we have to retrieve from the docker hub so let's go to hub.docker.com if you haven't created anything created login you will see this under the account go to the security and you ask for an access token okay so access token you can specify what kind of permissions you have right so i'm gonna give some description and generate an access token and when i generate the access token under the access permission i will use only the read and write i will not give permission to delete so i'm going to change this permission create see it even gives us the command what we have to do it but we don't need that right so i'm going to copy this it's it's a real secret but generally you are not supposed to show this to anyone, but this is a demo, you should know what we are doing. So I copy, I paste it, I add a secret. So you know what is the username, I mean, what is the secret key, what is the key, key value, right? So we have these two things. Now let's go back to action and start preparing a YAML file for our GitHub action. So under the action, I'm going to choose the base image, which is the Docker image configure. You click on it, it will give you a piece of uh, YAML file. We will name this as ci dash your docker image yaml file and step by step we will go the first one you see it as name right whatever you see that name that only will comes as a ci action name ci pipeline name so i'm going to put that as ci build and push image for dot net app just to you know for a better understanding you can always go to this repository and see how i have done but right so anything that you put with the as symbol it's called a comment it will not be executed the next one is 
on it is interesting so on means it is basically at what point of time we have to do certain action so i have put some piece of code what it is going to do is it is going to trigger the build based on the main branch the branch is main and i'm saying do not trigger this if any of the incoming changes are related to the readme vs code stuff or the github ignore right and even for the pull requests if any of these are modified we don't need to trigger because there is no actual code has been modified we don't need that the next one i'm telling workflow dispatch if i put this piece of line what it will do is the github action will allow me to manually run the workflow that's why we we need this workflow dispatch right if you don't have it it won't allow you to manually dispatch you just need to do it through the build uh, the build and the push all right so that's how uh, the workflow dispatch works. I've, I've given a comment there, allows you to run this workflow manually from the GitHub action. That's why it is, right? So you know that. The next piece of code is a job. That's the important thing. Job means it's a step-by-step -step process of instruction that we have to give it to the GitHub action to what to do. If you have seen this similar to what I've described in the Azure DevOps, exactly it's like one by one. So ours is .NET project, right? So we are saying, hey, here's the, here here is the the first one is a checkout process do the checkout the image is in so and so place but if you have to go and retrieve and put the image there use the docker username and the token to push this that's why the username and password is there okay so what it is going to do is it is going to actually read the docker file so docker file already has to pull the base image build it publish it to the folder, right? That's what how uh, the image will be created. So once the image is created, it will use these commands to publish the image, like it will actually create an image, and then based on that, it will do a tagging. If you see the last line, it's basically tagging it. And here all the variables are properly given, and then the last one is a GitHub run number. Run number is basically every time you do the incremental changes, the number will be incremented. Now, let's go back to the Docker Hub. We do not have a repository. So we will create a repository called Docker for .NET API. And this is the repository name that I've used in the YAML file. Okay. So I know what I'm going to use. So that's why I've put this here and give some description. It could be a public or a private beach make sure. If it is public, just the access token is enough. If it is private, probably you need uh, the username and uh, other details to access the private repository. Now, you look at this. In my previous video, I've already shown you how to build, right? Uh, so that's how it is. So username slash the, the repository name followed by the tag. So once we tag, this YAML file is there, ready to go. So now, as soon as you checked in, what happens? Um, this file will get triggered. And we're going to see that now. See, the file has already triggered and it's in queued state. So let's go inside and click on the Docker and see how the build is working. So it's trying to set up the job. And I will summarize again. It's basically going to read the Docker file. And in the Docker file, it is already clearly mentioned how to build an image. Pulls the base image and then runs on top of our code, builds it, packages up, like it will restore all the packages. And everything is done, it publishes to the folder and the, the, the image is then created, right? So once the image is created, it is tagged, which is happening through the YAML file. And the tagged image is then pushed to the repository under the hub.docker.com under my username, right? So you can see this action is happening one by one. See right now, first it is extracting and you know it is building the project. The project has to first build. If there's any error in the code, uh, in the whole repository, it's not going to build and it's going to fail it here itself. So once everything is still, see, job is completed, right? Whatever I described is what has happened. If I come here, do a refresh, you should see the latest tag and the 1.0 tag should be here, right? Here you go. We got two images and I'm, I'll also show you how the second image will come, right? So now we know how to do it. Now let's go back to the, the code itself and uh, I'll show you how it gets triggered automatically. So just to keep it simple, I'm going to go to the main code or uh, the program.cs, right? It's not in the ignored list. So here directly I'm going to edit it. This is only for demo, but generally speaking, I have rights I'm doing it, but you will be pricing a pull request and then it gets merged to the main branch or the developer branch based on your need. Right, that's when this is getting triggered. But for us, the main branch, anything comes in, it will get triggered. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncomment a piece of line which is already commented, which means it doesn't matter what I do, something has been changed. That's what all it wants, right? So I'm going to click on edit and I'm going to go to that particular uh, place like number 53 to 57. I'm going to uncomment all these lines and I'm going to commit the change directly to the main branch. See, committing directly to the main branch. Do not do this. I'm just showing this only for demo purpose to show you when something comes to the main branch, you see this automatically it got triggered. And if you go inside, it takes few minutes to build. Let's wait for uh, these things to complete. Once it is done, see, if you go here, do a refresh. If you go here to a refresh, you should see the tag called two. That's how the incremented number comes from the GitHub uh, run number. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. You learned how to build, push a Docker image to the GitHub repository. And uh, we will see a similar one to push to the Azure container registry in the next video. So I'm coming back to my application to make sure I mark everything as complete. I'm going to update my task. And this video is completed. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Happy coding!